Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So nonetheless, uh, just use an example of uh, the BPX. Now, this is the U.S. dollar's strength against the British pound. And let's say my outlook is bearish. So let's say that I believe over the next several months that, uh, that the U.S. dollar is actually going to weaken against the British pound. And perhaps it's going to drop all the way down to test the, uh, the support levels down at 60. So what I could do is I could actually... Sell, or I could actually buy a 62 strike put option, and that will allow me to participate in a drop over the next couple of months on the BPX. And ultimately, in order to uh, capture some premium and offset the cost of that long put option, I could sell off that um, that uh, that out of the money put down at 60. Now, my rationalization would be that uh, over the next couple of months. While I believe that there is the possibility of the uh, of the BPX dropping down to 60, I see 60 as a key support level, and perhaps I don't expect that uh, that the BPX is going to trade any lower than that. So why not sell off those puts to somebody else, and I can make some money as those options expire, but at the same time be able to generate some cash flow uh, or be able to generate a profit uh, equating to the difference between the purchase um, strike of the put minus the the uh, sell strike uh, of that uh, short put down at that 60 level. Okay, so again, the profit is the difference between the spread minus the net cost of the trade. So if we break that this particular strategy down to a um, to the, uh, the really the mechanics of it all, okay, we're looking at the BPX sitting at 62, and we're going to buy one. 62 strike put option and that's going to cost us 76 cents. So again, when I went into the market yesterday and I took a look at what the ask price was for these 62 puts, the market maker was saying if you want to buy this particular option from me right now, you're going to have to pay me 76 cents. So if I wanted to get into the trade immediately, I would be dishing out 76 cents or of course $76 to participate. Now, in order to offset some of that cost, I can go out and I can take a look at the September 60 strike puts, and I can see that there is a bid price of $0.12. Cents. The market maker is really saying, if you want me to buy this option from you, you're going to have to pay me right now $0.12 cents per contract, or $0.12, uh, 12 uh, cents or $12 per contract. So that is actually the bid price, and that becomes the credit that I receive into my account. So with that in mind, what we've done is we've lowered the net cost basis of this particular trade from 76 down to 64. Now, here's the thing. The consideration is that if I wanted to lower my cost more, I would have to choose a, um, a strike price that is closer to where the uh, underlying pair value is trading presently. So, of course, if I sold off the 61 strike puts, I would collect more of a credit, but I wouldn't be able to capitalize on as much of a drop in the pair. Now, on the other hand, if I was more bigger picture bearish and I felt that the um, that the underlying pair value, the BPX, was going to to um, drop uh, significantly lower than 60, then I could go down and I could collect less premium and sell off the 59s or the 58s. Eights, that would collect less premium into my account, but ultimately give me more of an opportunity to participate in a um, in a um, move to the uh, to the downside. So these are some of the considerations that you're going to be making when it comes to looking at uh, which uh, strike prices to uh, to sell off uh, in the uh, pursuit of constructing one of these uh, debit spreads. The idea is really just what are your expectations? How far do you think that underlying pair is going to move? And really uh, do you want to 
significantly offset your cost basis, in which case you're going to lower your profit potential for, for an underlying move, or do you want to just offset your cost basis a little bit but capitalize on a bigger picture move? So the, 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 um, the choice is going to be up to you. So again, here's a typical risk graph for a bear put spread. In this case, we, we have it uh, illustrating the, uh, this particular strategy on the BPX. And as you can see very clearly here, our maximum risk exposure has been lowered to uh, si uh, 64. So no matter how wrong we are uh, on this particular uh, uh, trade, we cannot lose more than the amount that we've put out for the, for the spread, which is, of course, $64 uh, per, uh, per position. But if we are right we have the potential of generating a $136 uh, dollar per contract profit. So you can see that we're essentially, uh, uh, once again, uh, looking at uh, about a 100% uh, percent, uh, possibility percentage rate of return based on our initial, uh, initial risk exposure. Now, uh, we cannot make any more uh, than uh, than that uh, $136 because quite simply we've given up all of that possibility to the individual that's bought those uh, those $60 strike put options uh, from us so they we benefit from 62 down to 60 and then they benefit from anywhere below 60 and, be, and beyond the break even point is calculated by taking the written uh, uh, strike or sorry the uh, the purchase strike price and subtracting the cost of the spread. So, in other words, the uh, the pair value has to be below 61.36 in order for us to to be in a break-even to profitable position on expiration. So, you can see that that as long as on expiration the pair is below 61.36, then we will make some sort of, some sort of a profit, with the maximum profit being recognized when the, the pair is trading um, at or below 62 and those written option contracts expire worthless. And of course, our long put option has uh, intrinsic value. Okay, so when we take our intrinsic value uh, of, two, uh, of essentially $2, 60 down uh, to, to, or sorry, um, 62 down to 60, and we subtract our 64 cents, you get our, uh, or $64, you get our maximum profit potential of of 13036 and again adjustments can be made to the uh, strike prices based on your objectives and whether or not you feel there's going to be a, a less of a move or more of a move within that particular time frame um, the idea is the lower that you can uh, the more you can lower the cost basis of your trade of the transaction the lower your break even point is going to be and the less the underlying pair has to move for you to put yourself in a profitable position. On the other hand, one of the characteristics that we look for when we're establishing these spread strategies is we really want to try to establish them so that we can make at least a 100% rate of return on our initial out, uh, capital outlay. So in other words, the two strategies that I've illustrated here uh, with the EUI call spread and the uh, BPX uh, put spread, in both circumstances, we've been able to, uh, with, our, with our objectives, we've been able to uh, create a risk-reward scenario of essentially 100% on our initial capital outlay. So that becomes a very good risk-reward proposition when deciding to enter into the trade. And the, and the really powerful uh, thing about utilizing these options uh, in these strategies is that you know this before you ever actually go in and enter into the market. So before you actually take the trade, you already know what your maximum risk exposure is for this for the particular uh, uh, for the particular uh, uh, trade. So it, it gives you a a really good outlook on the strategy and whether or not you're going to be comfortable with the risk reward proposition before you commit uh, before you commit your your live capital uh, to the market. And again, remember that you can offset these positions at any time uh, before uh, before exp uh, expiration. So what that means is, hey, maybe you may find yourself in a situation where you're not quite at 100%. But maybe you're at a 40% rate of return. Maybe you're at a 30% rate of return. doesn't matter. You can sell off or close out that spread strategy at any time before that expiration date to ensure uh, that, you're, um, that you're locking in, um, locking in uh, those, uh, those trades. Now, the one other com comment that I really I wanted to make here uh, before we actually go any further 
is the idea that that um, you know many investors uh, are very much interested in being able to participate in uh, the currency markets because it's become a, a very uh, hot topic in the news. We can't turn on CNBC or for uh, you know my uh, my Canadian friends BNN for example uh, without actually uh, seeing some sort of reference to what's happening in the currency markets. Particularly uh, if we look at comparing the uh, U.S. dollar the Cana- to the Canadian dollar, uh, and we recognize you know really the moves that have taken place in that particular uh, currency pair. So what 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 the uh, FX options market does what these ISE FX options market allows us to do is again rather than going out and trading in the currency world, which can be a fairly daunting um, you know proposition and, and can be quite scary for people that are not comfortable with that market. Um, we can go in and create these strategies with a bigger picture outlook in mind, but we have a limited and identifiable risk exposure. One of the, the challenges of trading the actual spot market, uh, current, uh, currency spot market, is just how volatile and, and how um, uh, you know, inherently dangerous that market can be if one is not paying very close attention to the, uh, to the, to the, to the positions, whereas if you create a strategy using these options, immediately you have a limited and identifiable risk exposure, and you know regardless of what kind of economic information is filtering out of Europe or what sort of a uh, of, of announcement comes out uh, with respect to the uh, to the U.S., uh, you know ultimately that you have limited and identifiable risk exposure uh, immediately upon uh, placing that uh, p- placing that uh, that trade. Um, so, uh, so that's just again a very important uh, consideration um, in, in utilizing these these FX options over uh, a, a, the uh, the currency markets. In fact, we have a lot of people that we teach and a lot of members that like to trade the currency markets for from a very short term perspective. So they'll go in and they'll use the spot market for trading very short term. But I'll tell you, um, many of them are going to the FX options market in order to trade bigger picture outlooks. Particularly, uh, we have a lot of Canadian uh, members that really, really want to position themselves based on the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar um, uh, pair value. And so they can go in and they can use the CDD options as a means of of positioning themselves in a bigger picture uh, trade. But at the same time, they can go out uh, about their day-to-day business trading the spot market. So it's a great complement to uh, to those short-term traders uh, who want to position themselves a little bit of uh, in, in a longer-term position with a limited and identifiable risk exposure. So moving forward here, guys, uh, just to, to uh, really uh, summarize the power of, of debit spreads, um, we reduce the break-even point of our trades, which means that ultimately the underlying pair does not have to move as significantly for us to, to get ourselves in a profitable position. Again, this allows us to profit sooner. So rather than having to sit around and wait for the uh, for the pair to make a very significant move, by lowering the cost basis of the uh, position, we actually get to recognize a profit much sooner. This also reduces the potential loss if the pair value moves uh, adversely. So if we're wrong, uh, we ultimately uh, uh, have the ability to, uh, 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 number one, to get out of the position at any time, but we know ultimately what our maximum risk exposure is at any given time, and, uh, and, and so we reduce the potential loss if, in fact, uh, the, the pair goes against us. Um, now, the trade-off, of course, the, the caveat to this, this strategy is that we lose the upside part profit potential beyond the strike price. So as I suggested, if we are, in fact, ambitious about the potential move of the underlying pair, we just simply need to make an adjustment to, uh, to the strike price that we sell so that we, we get to benefit from a bigger picture move uh, in, that, uh, in that underlying. Now, the next uh, uh, type of spread strategy that I want to uh, reference here is the, uh, is the idea of utilizing credit spreads. Now, credit spreads are, are a, uh, a fantastic tool for generating cash flow into, uh, into, a, uh, into a portfolio. And uh, 
what what we find when we look at the um, the, the the currency markets and these and these pairs, uh, and you'll see this if you reference the uh, the FX options outlook that we do on a weekly basis, is that the support and resistance levels for these pair values are very very well respected. And what that means for the options trader is that we can go in and we can actually sell off call options above resistance levels, and we can sell off put options below support levels, and we can generate a cash flow. Remember, because these contracts are cash settled, we don't have to worry about being exercised or sort of automatically assigned, or, or not automatically, sorry, but assigned on the contracts um, you know, partway through the, uh, the expiration cycle. Um, we actually will not have to worry about uh, about assignment uh, or settlement until the uh, actual actually uh, the expiration date which incidentally guys very 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 important consideration settlement is based on the the noon settlement rate of the underlying pair so in other words what you might be used to in the equity world is settlement taking place uh, at uh, 4 p.m. in the currency world, in these in the world of these FX options, settlement does not uh, or sorry takes place uh, at noon, uh, not on not at 4 p.m. So we need to take action at noon if we want to do something to manage uh, that the, the position. So if we're looking at creating a credit spread, there are really two types of of, of spreads that we're looking at. The first is a bull put spread. So what we're doing is we're selling put options when we think that the pair value is going to go up. And so ultimately when the pair goes up in value, then put options expire and we collect the premium. The bear call, uh, the bear call spread, we sell call options when we think the pair value is going to go down. So once again, we, we believe that, that the, uh, the pair is going to drop in value. We sell call options above the strike price and ultimately those call options expire and we collect the premium now ultimately when we just are a seller of an option contract we put ourselves into a position uh, um, that is known as being naked uh, the option contract and that means that we have an unidentifiable risk exposure because settlement on these option contracts is based on the difference between the strike price and the current value of the underlying pair, uh, the current pair value, what happens is if we don't do something to limit the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, our, our obligations, if you will, then number one, we're going to have to put up a, a significant margin requirement to participate, and number two, we don't know how much we stand to lose if we are on the wrong side of the, uh, the trade. So first of all, the benefits. The benefits are that we get to sell expensive options for a credit. It puts time depreciation on our side. So this becomes a very passive strategy. So in other words, unlike um, the option buyer, we're really just going to sit back and as long as the pair is below our sold strike in the case of the calls or above our sold strikes in the case of the puts, we just sit back and we wait for options expiration. Um, that means that we profit even if the pair stays at the same price. So it's a, it's a great way to t take advantage of a, um, of, a, of a currency that is, in fact, range-bound uh, between a, a key support and resistance level. We create positions monthly because options expire very quickly, or the, the rate of time depreciation expi uh, um, accelerates within the, first, or within the last month of options expiration. So if we can create these positions on a month-over-month -month basis, well, what happens is we can generate cash flow month to month. What also happens is we avoid commissions on expiration. So in fact, as all of the option contracts expire, Hey, fantastic. We paid commissions to get in, but if the options expire during the regular course of business and, and ultimately uh, they're worth nothing on expiration, well, we don't have to, we don't have to trade. Uh, we don't have to, to place another trade, so therefore we do not incur any more commissions. So there's a, there's a benefit in that regard. Now, a bullish put, put spread, we're bullish. Simple as that. Now, it confuses a lot of people because a lot of people don't associate a bullish market outlook with a put option. But remember, we're a put option seller. 
And so a put option seller wants that put to expire worthless, so that put will expire worthless only if the stock is above the, the strike. And so ultimately, we want the stock to be bullish to neutral, and we want those put options to expire worthless. So we're going to sell a put option at the strike price, which is below the current pair value. Okay, And we're going to receive a credit. Now, ultimately, we're then going to purchase a put option below the sold strike, and that limits our potential losses. The cost of that particular put option that we purchased is subtracted from the credit received, and the net result is how much profit we're going to make if the contract actually expires worthless. So as long as the pair value stays the same or goes up and stays above that, uh, that written strike price, Ah, ultimately, we collect our profit. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.